Hello, this evening I'm going to show you how to plot the forward and reverse characteristic of a diode. The diode I'm going to use is the 1M4001. I'm going to use multi-sim to simulate the, uh, the current and the voltage. And I'm going to plot the values into Excel. So if you're going to do this, what I'd like you to do is set up two uh, tables, one for voltage, one for current. And we're going to start with the um, reverse bias. Um, for the 1M4001, it's got a reverse bias breakdown of uh, minus 50 volts. So I'm going to start with minus 50.1 and work down from there. We're going to go to the zero point and then we're going to go forward bias and we're going to go all the way to 0 0.7. And you'll notice that on the table, the voltage settings are um, a lot more concentrated around the switch on point for the diode in reverse and in forward bias. Now you can set these up as you want. I mean, I've set them up as 0 point, uh, 50.1, 50.09, so on and so forth. But you'll see that on, on my graph there's quite a lot of detail and, and one could argue too much detail actually there and you could remove some of these points but um, that's up to you. Uh, I'll just let, I'll leave it as it is for the time being. Back in Multisim, I've already got this all set up so uh, but if, if you really wanted me to show you I, I could show you that uh, um, it's simulated at the moment but um, we get the power source sources that uh, come from here so there's your ground that's the ground here and DC power is there um, and the diode themselves they come from obviously the place diode and you just type the component that you want into there and it gives you the options and using the one m four thousand one, you could use whatever you want doesn't matter um, but uh, no, that's the one I'm going to use um, so in reverse bias we're going to start reverse bias I need to flip the diode around so that's what I'll do. Right click on it and keep it horizontally. Connect it back up. And then set the power supply to 50.1 volts. Now on your table it says minus 50.1. But you're not going to do that. You're going to use 50.1. Now the, the reason for this is because in reverse bias the current will flow this way through the diode against the arrow and in forward bias it obviously flows with the arrow so when you come to do your graph you're going to want to show the current flowing in two different ways okay and that's the reason why you use minus in reverse and positive in forward bias so now set up you can do a simulation make sure it's set to amps and you flatline their DC this is minus one uh, it's 182 milliamps which is going to be minus one eight minus point one eight two on your graph like so that's that one there sorry minus point one eight four oh my god and um, then you're going to go back into multi sim stop it and change it to the next one so we get yeah I know boring boring but never mind and uh, it's, it's very tedious actually but there you are and you're going to carry on doing that and plotting them it only takes about 20 minutes but you, know, you could be doing something more interesting in those 20 minutes anyway um, you'll notice that minus 49 volts I've, I've put zero in there and that goes all the way down to the the, the sort of the midpoint of the graph here and the reason is that I'll just show you. I hate Multisim, but it's free. Well, for a few days anyway. Um, there we are, 49 volts. So when I simulate that, I get 669 nanoamps. That's less than one millionth of an amp. In fact, it's about half a millionth of an amp. It's, it's totally negligible. In terms of the amount of graphing space we've got and if you do other tests going down minus 30 minus 20 minus 10 you'll get you know correspondingly lower values so in Excel I've just entered those as zero because effectively that current is negligible then we come to the the forward bias it's just a case of flipping the diode around stop the simulation if you've got it simulating and flip it Connect it up, change the voltage, uh, 
and simulate and plot. There you are. So that's microamp, so that's going to be a zero point and that's going to be five zeros two six five eight. Okay. So you're gonna put you're gonna pop that into Multi Sim. Uh, sorry, you're gonna pop all those into Excel. Um, highlight all these. So when you highlight all these you'll get uh beg your pardon, it's escape, escape. Yeah. Drag them all the way down to the bottom like that. Like that highlights them all. Then when you come to recommended charts, there's a little arrow there. That gives you all these lovely little options. I choose the top one, there are others if you wanted them. Uh, there you are, that's just another sort of version of the graph that we've already seen. Get rid of that. So that's how you do it. And the points of interest really in terms of analysis are where the diode goes from non-conduction, that's flatlining here, to full conduction in a very, very short space of time, in terms of voltage anyway, and th in reverse bias, which is a much higher voltage than forward bias. And the fact that when the diode switches on, the voltage across the diode at that point hardly changes at all. And that's a pretty important uh, point with diodes. Once you've got a diode conducting at, uh, say for example, 0 0.7 volts in forward bias, the voltage across that diode remains fairly steady and constant once it's conducting and it won't, you can't actually build any more voltage across a diode. You've also got this, this term, uh, this um, term of dynamic resistance. Obviously if the resistance was fixed for the diode, then the voltage and current would be just a straight, some straight line relationship between the two, but of course it isn't because the diode isn't conducting as we can see here and then it goes into conduction so if you were to zoom in on there the change in voltage divided by the change in resistance you would find that the diode's resistance changes as we increase the voltage in the forward direction the resistance becomes much much lower in fact it has to become much lower otherwise this current can't keep going up like this in this sort of exponential fashion okay so that's how we do it that's how we would plot the forward and reverse bias characteristics in in multi-sim obviously there's a practical to do um, but that's how you would do it in multi-sim to get the graph okay good night